Hi, it's Joe Glines from The Automator. And uh, the other night, it's kind of crazy, I uh, I woke up and I was having this dream that I was literally writing a hot string uh, in my dream. I had seen this URL and I'm like, oh, look, I can, once I understand this, I can write a hot string and, and grab the stuff. And I thought it was crazy. And uh, it reminded me of something I had wanted to do. I wanted to create um, <clears throat> an excerpt from the Udemy course we have on hot strings. Um, and one of the reasons why, let me show you this graph here. Uh, da, 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 here's the graph. Um, this is uh, taken from the Auto Hockey user survey we did a little while ago. And because we did it like, you know, five years ago as well, um, I'm plotting the some of the biggest changes. There were other ones, but there's two here I want to highlight. Um, the usage of hot strings compared to in 2016 has jumped a lot. Uh, Basically, you could say it's doubled, which is awesome. Uh, this was what was their favorite thing about AutoHotKey. And if you're not using hot strings, um, you're missing out, man. I'm telling you, like, I know I talk about this a lot, but they're amazing. And that's why basically in the, the following video here, you're going to get, you know, nearly half of the course that's in Udemy. I'm teaching you how to use hot strings all for free. Um, I do have coupon codes for this. And let me put them up here. Um, I did also want to mention, though, the GUIs is actually compared to 2016 has dropped a lot. And so that's why I thought at least the beginning part here, I'm going to mention both uh, both coupons. So both of these coupons here will give you discounts um, to the courses. Now, right now, you're going to see um, the excerpt from the Hot Strings course. Um, so you can you know go through this course. It has a lot of what's in there. I think it's not quite a half or so, but it's got a lot of the content from the Udemy course. Um, I just believe... Hot strings are by far the lowest hanging fruit for everyone to start, you know, using them to basically, it's like text expansion, right? You type a couple letters, have it, remove it, re, you know, put in um, a long, you know, even paragraphs. I think in the example video, I use a declaration of independence where I dump it in there really quickly. So I hope you get some value out of this. Share it, please share it, like and share it. Also, you know, if you're interested, the great thing about the Udemy courses, uh, besides that I make a little bit of money, which is great, but um, is that the courses are, are like three to five minute videos, right? So they really break it down and very simplify it. All the stuff is going to be slammed into one here. Um, so if, hey, if you hit pause a lot, great. You can get all a lot of the content. Granted, it's not the whole course, but a lot of the most important parts are in here. So hope you enjoy it. Um, I'll jump back in a little later on here just to remind you about the, the coupons and, and see how you're doing. Cheers. Welcome to this course in Auto Hotkey on Hot Strings. Hot Strings are basically like an auto replace or a text expansion tool. Think of it as autocorrect, uh, especially in years ago in Word, you could use it to, to fix your spelling as you type. The great thing about Hot Strings is they, they will work in virtually any program, any Windows program. So if you're doing instant messaging, if you're doing something in Notepad or Word or your email, it doesn't matter. You can put in a couple letters. So here's my first example. Uh, this is just an editor, and I can type B, by the way, period, space. And when I put that in, it will replace it whatever I've told it to replace it with. Um, another example here. So I did that here in this text editor, but I could have easily done it in notepad or I can do it in Word. So regardless of what program you're in, it will when you type the letters, it will replace it with what you want. And what's what's awesome is it it doesn't even have to be just one line. If you have longer text, like here is the DOI period space, and it just dumped in here the Declaration of Independence. So here you can see it, it put it all of this in here just by typing D, and now I told it DOI. You can put what abbreviation you want, what makes sense to you, and it will dump in the text for you. So if you have things you type frequently, it's going to replace that with um, what you wanted to put in there. And so it's basically a text expansion, so when you type certain letters, it will replace those letters with what you want it to be replaced with. And it works in virtually any Windows program. Some programs need a couple tweaks to them, uh, the different send types of events, but for the most part, that's the core of it. What we're going to do in this course is we're going to walk you through how to install a hotkey, go over some of the editors that you can use, and then all the ins and outs of how to set it up and how to make the best use of it and cover best practices, what to do when things go wrong, and um, give you some also some other great little scripts that can help automate even more work. So if you come to autohotkey.com and you land here, you're going to see this page. If, when you click download, it is going to ask you, do you want the installer or other versions? Go ahead and click the installer. Now I've already saved this. This is why it's coming up with the two here. 
Uh, I'll go ahead and save it again, as you can see. It's a 3 meg file, it's pretty small overall. You can hit Control J, and that'll bring up your past history if you've downloaded things before. Um, and I am going to go ahead, so that just re-downloaded that. I'm going to go ahead and run it. Now when I'm running this, it is going to come up with a couple options. Oh. It's going to ask you, do you want the Express installation or Custom installation? Uh, the default version is Unicode 64. We actually recommend that you use the Unicode 32-bit, um, and then you probably want to install it into this directory. So you'll hit here, go ahead and hit Next. This, it's up to you. Um, you can go ahead and leave these selected. That's great. And hit Install. And that's it. It'll install Auto Hotkey. You can see here it's it's a pretty quick, small program. The current version is 1.1.2403. That's as of, uh, I think, November 19th was the last version time it was updated. And that's it. You can hit exit, or you can hit run auto hotkey, but um, for now we're just going to hit exit. And that's the, uh, we recommend the Unicode 32-bit version. You can um, definitely run the Unicode 64-bit. However, it, it there really isn't a big benefit to doing that. Uh, however, the uh, versus the ANSI, um, chances are you want to stick with Unicode bit. In this video, we're going to discuss different editors you can use for editing AutoHotKey scripts. Uh, now, AutoHotKey scripts are actually, they're plain text, so let me show you here. I'm using Notepad to, to show a file, and here you can see it's just plain text. I'm not going to get into what these different commands do, but you can see you could just use Notepad, save it, run it. Um, Notepad works fine. However, there are other editors built that will help uh, do syntax highlighting in IntelliSense, which assisted in your typing. So there are three main ones that a lot of people use. If you come back to our autohotkey.com and scroll down just a bit on the main page here, you'll see there's site for autohotkey. And if you click more info, you can come over here and you can download it and it'll just walk you through how to install it. This is the editor uh, we both use. It's it's definitely one we would recommend, but the other two are also equally good. They don't really matter. But let me demonstrate. So there's also Notepad++ as well as AutoHotKey Studio, which is written in AutoHotKey and actually for AutoHotKey. It's got a lot of great built-in features. For that, you go to maestriath.com. And for the other one, Notepad++, there's a thread on the forum which helps you walk through how to install Notepad++. We'll make these links available for you uh, in the documentation. Um, in Sight, though, and that is, let me get back to the window, here, so after you install it and you run it, it this is how, notice here, these are the, the two exact same files. Right, so on the left here is site, on the right here is just using plain old notepad. And so you can see how having the syntax highlighting can really help you interpret your code, understand what you're doing. It also allows you in here, if you hit this triangle, it will run the script. And you can, you know, have multiple tabs. It's, it's much more flexible than just using notepad. So that's the core of the, the three main editors, site, studio, AutoHockey Studio, Notepad++, and of course you can still just use Notepad. But we highly recommend taking a couple minutes, download one of them, and install them. In the videos, we're going to be using Site uh, to demonstrate hot, hot strings. However, they're all equally good. Thank you. Before we get started with hot strings, we're going to do a little bit of some general descriptions of how AutoHotKey works. So wherever you've installed AutoHotKey, it will have created this AutoHotKey.ahk file which is the default file for storing um, hotkeys, hotstrings, and whatnot. I'm going to right-click on this and say Edit Script. That will pull up your default editor. And in this, there's some other stuff below, but right now I want to show you. Here's a couple settings we recommend having in there. This single instance force, this will force auto hotkey to only allow one version of this script to be running at all times. So this should be in there by default. Persistent, now if your code if your script has hot strings in it, they will automatically be persistent, but we still recommend having this in there. And this no environment, that's what that's abbreviation for, is allows you, to, um, it just saves some memory. And you can also, by the way, comment down here and say this is no environment. So the semicolon is how you add in comments. And so you can put them, um, you know, after anything, after it's fine, 
And so right now, if I look at my system tray, this is my system tray right here, there's nothing running, right? I don't have anything running here. When I hit run, now you'll see that little green H show up. This is that file that I just launched, right? And I can right, I can actually, so if I close this, I can right click on it and I can say, edit this script, reload it. There's a couple other things open. I'm going to say edit. That's going to pop me right back into this file. So if, if you go to launch something and you don't have that green H down there, your script isn't running, so you can't expect it to do anything. Uh, in your first script, let's do it a simple example here of how you can do a message box. So we'll uh, stick with the normal um, traditional thing of message box saying, hello world. Now when I run this, so actually, so it is running, so I'm going to save it, and now I'm going to right click on this and reload it. Right? It is going to say, hello world. I'll hit OK. It's that easy. Right? Let me go ahead and get rid of this. I don't want that in there every time. I'm going to save it. So as I mentioned earlier, site, you can click here or hit F5. And now that relaunched that script. So make sure after every time you make a change, of course, you have to save it and reload the script or, or start it. Um, because this has persistent in it, you can just hit launch and AutoHockey will detect that it's running and then it'll relaunch it. The last thing I'd like to add is that for hot strings, when you right click here, you notice you have a pause script and suspend script. So even though this has hot keys, hot strings are affected by suspend hotkeys, whereas pause does not affect them. So depending on which one, and of course you can just exit, and if I hit exit here, it's going to get rid of the script. And so now, if I even had a message box, it wouldn't run because it, the script isn't running. In this session, we're going to discuss whether you should have auto hotkey strings in just one file or keep them in separate files. So if I come over here right now and say, go to Task Manager, you can see I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different auto hotkey scripts running right now. Uh, this is one, and the rest are doing different things. So the question is, should you put them all in one, which you can, uh, or should you keep them separate? There really isn't a right answer. Uh, the general consensus is, keep them grouped together in how you use them. If you have certain things you use at work and certain things you use at home, you probably want to have two. If you have uh, certain things that you're going to do on a certain program, that you rarely use, maybe you want to have that separate. If you work more and you do both home and work, maybe you want to have one file. I compartmentalize mine. I have one main script, which has over 2,000 lines, and then I have one-offs that do different tasks. So there really isn't a right answer. Just know you can, you can have them in one, you can have them in multiple. They are small files. In this example here, I think we can see the size of memory they're taking up right very small size so you know in today's computers they can easily handle multiple i think there's a little bit of saving in memory if you have them uh in one but it's it's negligible so it really doesn't matter so before we begin writing our first hot string script i'd like to point out two things that are just good to keep in mind the first one is the ending characters now ending characters means you know when we type an abbreviation like btw period Right now, you notice it didn't replace anything. The second I hit space, and this is what the ending character means. So, so there's a space between this N and T, um, but I could do, this is a new line, this is a tab. So if I hit tab here, it's going to say, go do that replacement, right? So this is how auto hotkey knows when I see these characters, go look to see if I can put in a replacement for what was typed. Uh, so that's an important thing to keep in mind because... Um, Sometimes you might need to augment this, which you can change. We're not going to go into it now, but you can change that behavior to have have it monitor for different characters. Uh, the, these are the defaults, which I have found to be very intuitively, they work perfectly with how you think. You know, often you want a period or a question mark, um, the exclamation point. All those things, are they will tell it to go look for the text to go replace. The second thing is, if you realize you were about to type, by, by the way, period, and then um, you don't want it to do it, what you can do is you click away and back, and now when I hit space, it's not going to do the auto-replace. So by mouse clicking elsewhere is an easy way to get around it, or I th believe you can also um, hit like the home key or escape, right, and now it won't do it. So you're breaking auto-hotkey's understanding of what was typed. 
So those are two ways you can avoid having the hot string trigger and replace it. Okay, in this video we're going to cover building your first hot string. And we're going to keep it very simple here. The general format for, for most hot strings is you do two colons and then you type your abbreviation. What I like to do is to keep it between two to three letters. So let's say B D B T W period. And I put in a period just to help remind me and to make sure it differentiates what you're typing, that it's not something that you might have typed otherwise. And so using three letters, two to three letters in a period are great ways to make sure that um, you want to put in the text. It, it's going to be the hot string that you want it to replace. And then you're going to put in two colons, and then you can just put in what you want to replace it with. So this would be by the way. And I went out of my way here to capitalize these because what I wanted to demonstrate, I'm going to save this. And because I have my persistent command, I'm sorry, the single instance command up here, I'm going to just relaunch it. Now, when I'm down here and I type btw period, now when I hit space, it throws in this up here, right? And notice also, even though I type all the letters in lowercase when I did it, it put in them in uppercase. So you don't have to, I could have typed it with, um, with if I did mixed case, so capital B, T, W period, it will follow that way, but interesting enough, if I do all caps, it tries to outsmart me, and it does them in all caps. So however, typically what you want to do is just keep it lowercase. We can, later on, we'll go into how to make things case sensitive, uh, but this is the, the quick, basic things of, let's do another one here. I'm going to do two colons, and let's say GM, period, and that is going to be for good morning. So now I'm going to save it, and I can do that by clicking here. I just hit Control S, and I'm going to hit this, or I could hit F5, and that will relaunch it. And now when I come down here and type GM, period, in a space, it'll send out good morning. Notice it's also inserting a space here. We're going to cover how to take care of that if you want the space or not. Um, let's just say we also wanted to insert a comma here and a line return. Now line returns are interesting because what you do is you put in that as a new line. Um, this tick mark which is um, next to the, un, it's the uh, regular case for where the tilde is next to your one on your keyboard um, and then this stands for a new line and this is a line return uh, and then we'll say good morning how are you so i'm going to save this reload it or launch it again and type gm period now when i hit space you'll see it put in um, it actually put in two because i have a, a new line what i should have had was a line return and then a new line um, so let's take care of that I'll just do it this way, redo it. Actually, now here's the thing, when you're working in your hot, so normally you don't write inside of your script, right? Because you'll notice when I go to run this, here it says, hey, there's an error here, right? Well, that's because these auto hotkey doesn't recognize what these are. So you'll just delete that, save it, relaunch. Okay, and this you can tell it should basically blank out and you'll see that it's run. Now GM period space puts them in there. Um, or we can, in, in different in editors, so this one is interpreting as two line breaks. So I will do it just with the new line feed. And now when I type GM period space, it just put them in one. So that is the quick, simple way for hot strings to uh, get them going. And, and you can have up to 40 characters in here. Now, generally speaking, well, that's a lot of text to be typing. Um, so you, you probably want to keep it anywhere between two to five. Now, you can you can even, if you really wanted it, right, I could have it G. Okay, so I'm going to save this and launch it. And now when I type G in a space, it's going to put that in there. But the problem is, now if I'm typing morning... Oh, it, it actually, it's monitoring for that if that was on its own. So if I type G here in a space, it'll do it. But it's monitoring that it's not um, on its own. So, which is, which probably works fine, because I'm not going to type a G on its own. But an A on its own, right, this would not be good, because I have, and I want to say A dog, A, oh, look, it put that in there, right? This is why you, generally speaking, 
you don't want to use one letter unless it's something you're going to use a lot, and then you, you use a specific letter that, like a Z, something you're not going to type on its own. Um, and then I also like putting in a period. It's just great ways to reduce the the um, replacements when you don't want them. In this session, we're going to discuss sending special characters in AutoHotKey in your hot strings. And in this first example here, uh, it's it's a interesting case of this tick mark, which is the key to the left of the one. Let's say I wanted to have that in my hot string. Uh, I'm going to save this, I'm going to hit my browser forward button, which tells it to reload the script, and now when I hit T period space, notice there is no tick mark in there. That's because auto hotkey treats this, I can think of my little cheat sheet here as an escape key. And what you want to do on the tick mark is you want to have two of them together. So I can put in a second one here, and now I'm going to save it, reload, and when I hit T period space, it throws in that tick mark. So the um, there are a couple keys that are a little bit different characters that are like that, where you can you put in the tick mark and it will treat a little differently. So there are some shortcuts. So this is the escape key for um, escaping the tick mark, which is just two in a row. And then you can also throw in the actual tab. So what's what's interesting here is let's say I had this tick mark in T. Let's say I wanted to have a tick mark and then the word tight. Right when I save this and reload it, and I hit T period, you would think it would still put in without the tick mark. It would just put in tight. But what happens is there's no there's no T here. Um, it's it's what it's doing. If we show the white space, is it inserted a tab? Right, this tick mark T, and you can see down here. That's how I knew that. Right, the tick mark T is um, going to send a tab character, and then the tick mark R is going to send in a carriage return, and the tick mark N is a new line feed. So those those are the ones that use the tick mark. The rest of them, what you do is you wrap them in brackets. And so let's do a demonstration here. So let's say I wanted to have, say, escaping... Um, let's change that to be demonstrating... I can't spell. Demonstrating tab. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put like this, and I'm going to put the word tab. And I know that because right down here, I have the word tab in between the brackets. And so, and you know what, I'll even do it here. So that way, I'm going to reload it, type T period space, and notice I had left the white space on so you can see there's a tab now inserted in there. I could have done that um, a second way, and you can work them at the same, um, both you can use at the same time. So I'm going to save this, reload it, and now you'll see there's actually two tabs. Right, so inserted a tab for this one, and then a tab for this one, right? So that is that's how I'll insert those. Um, and actually, let's say I actually want to have four tabs, and that's why I left this example here. Is the nice way of doing it this way is I can say tab four, get rid of this, save it, reload it. Now when I hit T period space, it inserts four, one, two, three, four of whatever this is. So if you wanted to have multiple um, line returns or, or de hit delete four times in a row. Uh, that's how you can repeat it without even doing any sort of a loop or anything. So it's a, it's a handy thing to be able to use. Uh, the other way, what's nice about this is it escapes just what is in here, right? It treats it as raw, basically. But the other way you could do it is you could say, let's say I um, wanted to send an exclamation point. So I need it now exclamation point, right? So when I save, reload, and of course when I do this, it's not going to send the exclamation point. Why is that? Well, it's because up here I should have wrapped it. And let's just do it to show an example. So this works fine. I can hit T period space, and it throws in the exclamation point, right? Um, the other way I can do that is in the options here, I can put in R in between the first and the second um, colons. And what that'll do is that'll tell AutoHotKey to treat everything to the right here as raw text. So send exactly how it is. So when I save reload and I hit T period, notice it throws in the exclamation point. So either way works. Um, there is no right way. This the, the other way I showed you with putting in the curly braces isolates it a little better. However, um, it also isn't as easy to read. And there's no really right and wrong way. The other thing I'd like to point out is if you actually go to this website, and let's pull it up real quick, you'll see there are a lot of other characters 
So normally in hot strings we're sending words, but you can set, you send keystrokes, and here it's going to show you some of the documentation. These are why these, these first ones are very special. They're modifier keys that um, affect hot keys. Uh, however, if you scroll down here, you can see there is quite a bit of selection to choose from that you can send a lot of different things. So if you wanted to send in a password and then hit, you know, enter, or send in um, password and go page down twice, right, something like that, um, they give some good options here. But that's the easy way to make sure on these special characters you uh, get the text that you want. Okay, so I, I hope you're enjoying this course. Um, like I said, it's just an excerpt out of the Udemy course, which has even more uh, of the hot strings processes in there and how to uh, use hot strings and troubleshooting and dealing with um, a lot of things. But um, hot strings are amazing. They're such a great time saver. Um, I hope you, uh, you're enjoying this course because I have a value of it. And again, if you consider uh, purchasing the course, so I have the GUIs uh, one here listed above also, but um, over my head here. But uh, the, uh, the, the hot strings course is the one that obviously we're featured on here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing to be able to use. Now, you, again, you probably, um, if you're this far, you've started understanding the value of them. Um, and just there are some advanced stuff in there that I don't have in this course. But hey, do the research too, right? Go to the help, uh, auto hotkey help files can help you work through stuff um, or consider getting the course. Cheers. In this session, we're going to cover hot strings that are long or have special formatting that you want to keep and just want to make it easier to maintain. So an example here, let's start off with, uh, we're going to have some text period. And in this text, I demonstrated earlier, you can say Joe... I'm going to say put it on a new line, was new line here, and I'm going to hit the tab button today. Now when I save this, rerun it, and type txt period, it dumps it in here, and notice the line breaks in um, the tab there. The other thing that in sight here I'd like to point out is if, if under view, if you want to see the white space and view end of line, it'll show you the characters Right, so this is the the um, line end and line feed, and here is the tab, this arrow. Right, so this is when you have special formatting. But um, the other thing is, if if what if this was um, hundreds of lines long, and you don't really want to go through and put in this tick mark in everywhere, or the um, the tabs are actually okay by that as long as it's not at the end the tick mark in everywhere where there's a line break. So there's an easier way to take care of that um, without a hotkey. What we're going to do is let me turn off because this white space is annoying to look at, but it can be very helpful. I think it was the reveal codes in Word, if you've ever used that. Um, it, it helps you spot all the, all the uh, hidden characters. All right, so let's go ahead and... Actually, we'll go ahead and leave that there, right? Because that's what I want. What you can do is you can come in here and put a print here and a print here, right? So the open print and close print. And what that's going to do now, if I save it, relaunch it, and type txt period space, so it, it puts it in just like this was here. This will work if your characters are under, it's around 6,000, I'm sorry, 16,400. So that's a lot of characters. Um, I actually have an example down below. I didn't really want to try to... Uh, do it live because um, it would take me a while to generate this but this is my long text right so this is you can see here how many characters it's it's quite a bit so if I, I'm going to come into a different sheet here and get rid of all this and hit long text period space and it's going to send all of those characters you can see it's literally sending the keystroke so your computer was going to interpret that as well um, but it's sending them to that page here here all of it was this works great, and, and for the vast majority of stuff that you have, they'll be under, you know, 16,000 characters. So this is one of the easiest ways um, to to handle that, is to, to use this. Another way that you can do it is to um, use a file read and store the, the content into a variable. So let's say it's more than 16,000 characters, right? So what you want to do is you, you put your text... The simplest way is you put your text in a file, and notice here I have over a thousand lines of this. The other one, um, let's take a quick look here, how many lines was it? It was uh, 16, I'm sorry, 163, and this one we have um, over 10 times that amount, 
right? And what you would happen if I came back in here and went down to this one and say, I'm going to add a couple rows. When I save this and we launch it, notice it says, hey, this continuation section is too long, right? And that's when you, you wouldn't be able to launch your script. And so it doesn't send partial, it just won't let you launch your script, right? So you want to avoid that. Oh, I still got to get rid of one more line. Save it. Okay, so now we're good. But what I want to do is I put my text in this file here that I want to use in my replacement. And over here, I'm going to say file read, and I'm going to put the path, well, actually, first I want to store, put the variable I'm going to store it in. So I'm going to store it in the clipboard. So this is an easy way to do that. And then you put in the path. And so um, over here, I have, I've customized my site. But what, basically what you do is you'd find the path to that file. I'm going to say copy path to this file. But you would find the path using Explorer, find the path and paste it here, what that's going to do is it's going to go read this file and store it in your clipboard. And then all you have to do is now leverage that and say, I'll do txt2, period. And I'm going to do this. We're going to cover the different send types later on, but I'm going to use send input. And this um, caret, which is over the 6, caret v, means control paste, um, control V, which is paste. So send paste, right? And notice I commented that this is, so I'm going to say control paste because, um, I'm going to send paste because I've stored the variable in the clipboard, right? And I'm going to add a return here so it doesn't keep processing. Now, when I save this and relaunch it, now txt2 period, if I come over to here, the great thing about this is txt2 period. Watch how fast it dumps it in there, right? So because I read that to a variable, stored it all in the clipboard, and then just hit paste, it's not sending each keystroke, but it dumped the uh, 1141 lines, right, into this file. And this will be an exact replica of what this file was. Right, so when you have long, very long, text that you want to send, um, it's one of two ways. Typically, I I use that first route, this one, because it'll, it'll handle up to 16,000 characters, and it's very easy to read, and it's usually pretty close to exactly what I want. And if that doesn't work, I'll just store what I want in a text file. It can be any type of file. The extension doesn't really matter as long as it's um, text. And then you can read it, and then um, just store it in... You read it into the variable... Here, I'm using the clipboard, and then I send uh, paste, and that's it. In this session, we're going to cover having context-sensitive hot strings. What that means is that I can type the same thing, and Auto Hotkey will determine what window I'm in, what program I'm using, and it'll send different text depending on the window I'm in. And how you want to do that is, first, we're going to um, right-click on your icon down here when your script is running, and say Window Spy. This is a program that comes with auto hotkey that will tell you when I, it's blank right now, but the second I click on this window, it's going to come up with several different, th it's, it's got a lot of information here, but the, the top three are the ones that are, we're interested in right now. First, there's the window title, class, and then process. Uh, for this training, we're going to focus on these two. Um, the vast majority of the time, these are the ones that you're going to want. They're going to be sensitive enough to give you what you're trying to do. This third one we'll do in an advanced one when you have more than one window, and we're going to do some pattern matching on the title, which can come in very handy. Um, so first off, what we're going to do is we have Notepad here, and now see when I click on Notepad and it updates this. So now the title is Untitled Notepad, and then the class is Notepad, and the process is Notepad.exe. So what we're going to do, we're going to do the first one with this H k class notepad and how you do that is i copied it here but i'm going to start off typing if when active and what that's doing is it's telling notepad i'm um, sorry auto hotkey if the active window is 
Notepad, this is this class Notepad, then we're going to um, do the hot strings contained in this. And so let's put in tx period. I'm in Notepad. And what you can do, if, if I didn't close this out, it would keep treating everything as if it's a Notepad and only apply it to that. But the way I'm going to cancel that out now is I'm going to put this here, and now that'll basically turn it back to do everything except for Notepad because I only have um, this in my script. And I'm going to borrow this, and I'm going to paste it, and I'm just going to change this to I'm not in Notepad. Now when I save it and rerun it, now when I type, when I'm in Notepad and I type TX period and put in my space, it says I'm in Notepad. But over here in site, when I type it, it says I'm not in Notepad, right? And that'll work, of course, in any other program. If you open up your email, open up anything, it's going to monitor if you're in Notepad. It's going to do this, but if you're not, it'll do this. Let's, let's do the example with the process as well. So all you would do here is you can copy this out. Oh, and actually, I just made that in, in site. So notice here, it's, it's staying on my active window. So I want to come back to Notepad. Now it has hknotepad.exe, and I'm going to place this here, and this will work just the same. I need to get rid of this. Let's save it. Come down here, hit reload, and, and this will work exactly the same. I'm not in Notepad. In this one, I'm in Notepad. So this is really handy if you have the same thing that you use in different programs, or let's say you want to have a certain password, right, that you pass and the, the different programs um, have a different password. So you could look at the program you're in and have it send a certain keystroke uh, based off that program. I like to use this for doing um, my comments. And so if I'm in site, when I type, I can have it set up where I hit R period and I'll put in the semicolon. But if I'm in a different program, it will begin this with something else because other programs like SQL, you'll have a dash dash, right? Um, and HTML is different, and um, all the other programs. So I don't have to remember different hot strings to work in the different programs, and I don't have to think about what program am I in and how do I comment out something. I can just have it type the same thing, and it gets sent there. The other thing you want to make sure you do is when you want it to realize you're in a program, a specific program, you want to put that before this one. If I was to move this up before the other one, auto hotkey when it's running through, it'll see this and it won't, it will never get to this. It'll just interpret this and apply it. So if I save this and reload it and run it. Now, if I'm in here, it says I'm not in Notepad, but even when I get into Notepad, it still says I'm not in Notepad, and that's just because Auto Hotkey comes down here and it sees this first, and it's just going to interpret this hot string and not think about the other thing. So make sure when you are being specific within a given program, you list those above a generic one. In this session, we're going to cover how you can use hot strings to actually launch programs. This isn't a typical thing you would do. However, it's just it's good to point out that you can do this because uh, you, you might have the desire to do it, and it's very simple to do. So let's let's have something to say if we wanted to launch our web browser. So I'm going to put in here wb period, and I'm going to return here, and I'm going to say run. Let's say I want to go to a certain web page, right? So we can go to the um, autohockey.com, so that would be www.hk, and I'm going to add a return down here. So when I save this and run it, so now it's launched, and I type wb, period, now when I put in my spacebar, it launches my default browser to that website. So it's very simple to do in the run. You can basically put, if you put in a, a URL, it'll open your default browser. You could put in the, the type of browser you want and then add as a parameter the page to load. That's a little more complex. Let's say if you had Excel installed. Um, so I want to launch Excel every time I type EX period. So I'm going to say run Excel.exe and add a return. The return is what stops it from continuing on. Otherwise, um, it would run both when I do the web browser if I had omitted this. 
Um, and actually, I'll do a little demo just to make sure you understand that. So I'm going to save this. Let's reload it. And now when I type ex period space, it's going to launch Excel for me. Now I could be anywhere, right? I can be in any, actually even in Excel, I can type ex period space, and it's going to run another instance of Excel. So it just launches it. Excel works like that because um, all the Microsoft products, Microsoft will insert the executable in the path. Otherwise, you have to go hunt down and find the path to your file if it's not in your system path. Um, so let's let's pretend here that I had removed these two, and when I type web browser wb period, I want to run both of these, and let's also run Notepad. Now, when I save this, reload. When I type wb period and hit space, it's going to do all three of those things. So it launched Notepad, it came up to this website, and it launched Excel. So the return is what prevents it from continuing on um, down the path, and that's it. In this session, we're going to talk through what to do when you're having problems and how to troubleshoot. So the first thing is, if you are trying to get your hot string to work, let's say I'm in sight, here we go, I have this hot string right here, and I go to run it, and it doesn't work. Um, the very first thing I always do is, hey, make sure there's a green edge here. You know, is the script actually running? Uh, it sounds silly, but obviously if it's not running, you don't have a chance for it to be working. Um, after you do that, now let's say you've just installed a hotkey, and you're trying to get it to work, and you haven't got it to work really anywhere yet, or that it's not working in one particular program. Nine out of ten times, it's the user access control. Um, the user access control, if we come here to the auto hotkey forum, you can see they, they document basically in, in XP, I'm sorry, in Windows uh, Vista, um, it, it's, they started off this thing, this uses, uses access control, and what it does is it um, prevents other programs that are running at a lower level from automating um, those programs. And in Windows Vista, it wasn't on by default, but in Windows 8 and 10, it is on by default, and actually in Windows 10, you can't even adjust it. If, when you adjust it, you have to reboot um, and have it take effect. And so it, um, it's not. It, it's an easy thing to change. Now we don't recommend that you turn it off permanently. However, it is a quick and easy way to test to see if it is the issue or not. So what I would do is is open up Control Panel. Um, when you get to Control Panel, find User Accounts. So you click there, um, and this change user account control settings. This is where you can see, I keep mine off. Why do I keep mine off? Well, it's because I am the only person that uses this computer, and I know better than clicking on random scripts or programs I download that could be viruses. Um, so I, I choose to turn it off. That is definitely not our recommendation. Um, however, what I would do is turn it off, um, hit OK, go back, try your hot string. If your hot string works, come back in, set this back up to the level that it was, um, rerun it, and if it doesn't work, now you've identified that it's the, the UAC that is the issue. Um, and there is one way that, that most of the time, by adding this syntax right here to the top of your script, it will take care of it. What it does is it detects that if, if you're, um, not, if the script isn't running as an admin level, it'll relaunch it as an admin level. And it, it basically elevates it. And then that way, the other programs you're trying to type in that are at the admin level, it can go ahead and um, automate them. The the One of the biggest drawbacks of this, of course, is if you use this, like if I have here where I say B, I forgot I have a hot string, but um, all right, uh, R period, and then we're going to move over here and say run note. Pad.exe. So anything, if you do this, it is going to, when it launches the other programs, they are also going to be at the admin level. So it can introduce some insecurity. However, um, generally speaking, it's, it's not a big deal, especially if you're not telling AutoHotKey to launch other scripts. But that is the, the by far the, the typical thing that you run into, especially when you notice they work in some programs and not others. So another thing I will do is launch Notepad and try to perform my hot string, try to get it to expand in Notepad. And if it works there, but it doesn't work like in my SQL developer or in an email or something, that's when it, and often it's a UAC issue and you just need to 
to add this to it, and that's the quickest and easiest way to deal with it. In this session, we're going to follow up on troubleshooting. As we mentioned earlier, often the UAC is an issue. Um, we're going to walk through here to give you some kind of Q&A on what to do um, depending on the response. So as I mentioned before, the first thing you want to do is look, make sure the script is actually running, right? Simple one, if it's not running, make sure it's there. Actually restart the script. Um, this is if, if you're, the hot strings aren't working the way you want them to, right? After you do that, um, is it just one hot string or is it all of them? If it's a specific hot string, um, is it, you know, let's try it in Notepad, try it in other programs. Is it tied to one program? If it's not, um, if it works in just Notepad and not the other program, again, it could be UAC. Uh, it could be just that program has built-in things that will not allow you to send in that format. Um, and down here we'll get into some of the other formats uh, uh, that you can use to send keystrokes. Um, again, test uh, the privileges. If um, if you're doing a context-sensitive one, this is when you you have the same you type the same abbreviation for something, but it um, it is supposed to send a different content if you're in a different program. Uh, make sure that you have the context part first so you'd have the site listed first and then everything else after it otherwise it never gets to the next one so make sure the order is correct um hey reboot the computer I, i'd even say put that up at the top of the list first thing you know it's windows right just reboot make sure um, that you've restarted the computer i'd also say kill off virtually anything and everything else that you can um just to make sure there's nothing conflicting with it and try it in notepad so basically eliminate all the other things that it might be, um, because more often than not, it's something is conflicting with it. It's not that um, your script itself is necessarily not working correctly. After you've exhausted all those, um, generally I, what I start doing is, is I start looking in the AutoHotKey forum or Stack Overflow to see if people have had similar issues. Um, make sure you figure out if the problem is consistent, if it does the same thing over and over and over. Can you actually try the same script on another computer and verify that it's, is it the computer or is it your program, the script, that's actually the, the issue? Um, sometimes if it's receiving some but not all of the hot string, what you might try and do, so there's, we didn't really go in depth in these because it, it gets, starts getting pretty technical. Uh, but there is a send input, send event, send play, send raw. These are all different send types of commands. And this first one here, so you can add this, pound hot string si at the very first one and what that will do is change the default to doing send input um, and if that doesn't work try send event and send play and those just all they work differently with different programs some of them work a little faster than others the auto hockey does a good job of putting the best guess and then trying one and if it doesn't work trying a different one so typically it, you don't want to play with those but it's a good thing to just say you know what i'm going to go ahead and give it a try to send one of the different use one of the different send commands. Um, another thing that'll happen is you won't realize that you have the same hot string in another script and it is launched before the one that you're working on and so that is the one that's in memory. And um, so just make sure that you don't actually have, you know, what I will often do is put in something I'm sure that is not a hot string somewhere at the beginning of the trigger and make sure that I'm actually triggering off the right one and then of course you can hunt it down and figure out where it is. Um, if you're doing something with Unicode, uh, first thing to do is make sure you're actually running. I mean, here's the easy way. Is I think in here you can come up and see. Here's the auto hotkey version, what version I'm using. Um, it auto hotkey, when it installs, it actually installs uh, the 32-bit, 64-bit, and ANSI and Unicode versions of them. Um, it just depends on what's the default version. And so if you're trying to run Unicode, obviously you want to be using the Unicode, either 32 or 64 bit. The other thing that you want to do is make sure that you, the encoding of your file, so this, uh, let's go back to site here. If we come up here to file and say encoding, right, if, um, make sure that this is, is configured. I usually go with UTF-8 bomb. Um, it depends, of course, what I'm going to have in here, but sometimes that isn't set correctly and then auto hotkey won't see the Unicode text and send it correctly. And um, the, the other last thing that will come up from time to time is certain programs will look for um, these line ends and new line fields. Sometimes they want both. Some programs want both. Some programs just want the new line, and some of them want the line return. 
And so if you end up having double spaces or not um, enough spaces, try sending, instead of using two of them, you know, send one or send the other or send both, depending on what you're trying to do. But more often than not, when you're getting double spaces, um, the program only wants one of them and not both. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this excerpt from the Udemy class. Like I said, it's not the entire course. It's, it's approximately half, somewhere in there. And uh, there's a lot of other stuff that you might want to learn if you take the course. Uh, or as I said, go to the AutoHotKey help files and work through them and figure out how to, to do them on your own, right? It's not rocket science. The forum's great also. Uh, but consider using these coupons here to purchase the course if you like. Um, thanks. And please like and share this. That's the minimum I would say is like for doing this. Just please like and share the video or, or comment, right? And, and mention how you use them. Uh, mention also if you think hot strings are amazing like I do. Cheers.